So let's talk a little bit about how high availability works within a UCP environment. So as I mentioned before, you have a primary UCP controller, and this sits on itself within a single host node. And we'll call this the controller node. Within that node, you have a UCP controller, you have a swarm manager, You have a key value store, and you also have a pair of certificate authorities, the client CA and the cluster CA. Now, under normal circumstances, if this node went down, all of your information about the UCB deployment, your user accounts, your cluster settings, your certificate authority, those would all disappear, and you might be in trouble for your deployment. High availability allows you to create replica nodes that, that parallelize this information and preserve the cluster's res, uh, resiliency in case of a failure. So the way that you do this is using the docker ucp join with a dash dash replica option. This allows you to create a new node which now mirrors several of these containers. So the UCP controller, the swarm manager, and the key value store. Important to note that the client CA and the cluster CAs are not replicated for security purposes. So you want to back those up separately. But this replica node allows you to provide stateless services in the form of the UCP controller and the swarm manager, which can accept requests for adding new nodes to the cluster or setting user accounts. And all of the state for the cluster is saved within the key value store. So the key value store is gonna be replicated across a series of both controller nodes and replicas, and that's what ensures your, fa your uh, failures to tolerate. It's important to note that the amount of failures that your system can tolerate is directly dependent on the number of controller nodes and replicas that you have. So this can be one of three sets of settings. Either you can have three, five, or seven nodes. In a three node cluster, that's one controller node and two replicas, your system can tolerate one failure. That's because at a minimum, you always need an odd number of available controllers and replicas in order to ensure that your Various controller nodes are able to come to an agreement on which one has the which one has the correct interpretation of the cluster. So in the case of a three-node cluster, you're able to tolerate one failures. In the case of a five-node cluster, you're able to tolerate two failures. In the case of a seven-node cluster, you're able to tolerate three failures. The trade-off between these is the number of nodes that you're willing to use for HA in your system, the number of fault tolerance you you hope to have in your system, but also the performance. The key value store is replicating information across each of these nodes. Thus, the more nodes you have as replicas, the lower potential performance you'll have on your system. So you, if you want a higher performance system, you're only willing to tolerate one failure, then you use three nodes. If you want a super resilient cluster and you want to tolerate three failures, but you're willing to deal with slightly lower performance as a, res as a result, you're going to want to use seven nodes. If you like that one, please check out the next video in the series.